The date is Sunday, July 19th, 1964. The game is the Cleveland Indians versus the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Fans with me today is my guest, is a fellow that's done a lot of great pitching for the Yankees and still, do, still doing a great job. You probably already recognize him, the great left-hander of the Yankees pitching staff, Whitey Ford. And Whitey, fans back here at Yankee Stadium, our guest, Whitey Ford. And Whitey, you've been pitching for the Yankees now. I believe this is the 13th year. Is that true? Yes, uh, I joined him 15 years ago. But I spent two years in the service, so this is actually my 13th year of pitching. Whitey, you are uh, considered and the coach of the pitching staff on this ball club. Is that true? That's right, yes. Now, what is your duties on this ball club as a pitching coach and also a pitcher? Well, uh, the duties as a, a coach, to see that the players stay in good shape, the pitchers stay in good shape, they do enough running, and uh, that's pretty easy because uh, most of the guys in our club know how much running they should do and how to take care of themselves. <clears throat> Another job I have is if a, a certain pitcher is really going bad, it hasn't happened, but uh, Downing maybe this year, one stretch was going a little bad, he was wild. We try and work with uh, Al and get his control straightened out, and uh, that's about been our only problem all season was Al, and uh, now we're, we're, our pitching staff is in real good shape right now. Why do you, uh, now you have, you won 12 games this year, and you seven of them has been by shutouts. What's the most shutouts you've had in one season? I think seven. Uh, seven already, this year. I had seven in uh, 1955 or 56. So uh, this would be the most. Uh... Why do you know there's a lot of conversation about pitchers? I was a pitcher my time, uh, one time, and you know a lot of these here uh, ball players and managers you see in the paper about fellows trying to cheat out there on the mound. Now, I know that uh, I've been accused of jumping in front of the rubber throwing to a hitter, and uh, I see in a paper once in a while where certain pitchers are throwing spitters, and you happen to be one of them. Now, you have a baseball there. I don't believe you throw a spitter, do you, Whitey? No, I don't. Do uh, do you ever fake one? Uh, I know a lot of hitters think I do. Uh, I'll go to my mouth once in a while, but the rule is that you have to wipe your hand off mm -hmm. if you go to your mouth. And mm -hmm. uh, But I don't throw a spitter. Uh, managers have accused me, uh, not too many ball players, but a lot of managers, and they're usually about 100 feet away and can't see nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones that will accuse me of uh, doing but something. But that umpire can see you, though, when you do this out there? Yeah. Well, uh, this and you wipe that slob off you. Well, if you wet just the um, tips of your fingers and you wipe down like yeah. that, the tips are still wet. Yeah. But it looks like you wiped them off, but they're still wet. Uh huh. So, Whitey, now I'll ask you. Uh, in throwing that uh, spitball, uh, <laughs> you just do that on the sidelines, don't you? I've thrown them on the sideline down in spring training. You know how around. to throw a spitball. Oh yeah, there's nothing to it. Uh huh. Well, how does a spitball act whenever you turn it loose? Well. Uh, First, like I said, you get your fingers wet, and then you, when you grab the ball, you don't want to touch any of the seams. See, I don't have, uh, I'm not touching the seams here or here or back here. Uh -huh. And you keep those fingers, these, these tips wet, uh -huh. and when the ball leaves your hand, it comes out real quick, uh -huh. and it acts like a knuckleball. The ball doesn't spin, it just comes in straight, and it's just like a fast knuckleball, and it usually will go down. Uh -huh. Now, why do you, in throwing that spitball, uh, where do you get the, uh, you ever wipe your forehead off, or you ever get perspiration from your arm, anything like that? Well, if I'm uh, throwing them in spring training, I don't care where I get it, because it's usually, uh, you know, in batting practice, or, yeah. but you're not allowed to throw them during the game. No? No. But I, but Did you ever throw, throw one in the National League? Did well, uh, I'll tell you the truth about it. Uh, why do I used to, as you say, wipe my finger, but I didn't mean to know I was throwing a spitball, and and uh, but then those days we didn't have to wipe our hands off. I mean. Uh, oh well, we we do now. We have to. Uh, you can't use any foreign substance on the ball, and you cannot wet the, your fingers without wiping them off. Did an umpire ever tell you, as a batter stepped out of the plate, let me see the ball? Yes. What was he looking for the ball for? Well, uh, usually the batter will ask to see the ball. They want to see if it's too dirty or if it's wet or. Uh -huh some reason but uh, do you ever roll the ball on the ground to the hitter or back to the umpire do you know because it's never wet I uh -huh. just throw it straight in and uh, why did, did you ever sneak up on that pitching rubber any time to a hitter no uh, my first manager Lefty Gomez he was a great <laughs> pitcher with the Yankees he tried it and he told me to try it but I'm gonna wait a while uh, in other words you mean it's get in front of the rubber and yeah, let go yeah, yeah. he told me to cover the rubber up with dirt See, yeah. the umpires couldn't see it, <laughs> and then get up in front and throw it. I did that one time in Philadelphia against Pinky Whitney. They told me Rocha was our shortstop, you know, and we had a pitcher on their club of stepping up there, 
uh, about a foot in front of the rubber every time it turned the ball loose. And Rocher, I was pretty fat, and he said, yes, you do that. <laughs> and I stepped up one day, wound up and stepped about a foot in front of the rubber and threw the white, I think it went and hit the ball out of the ballpark. I don't think a foot had helped me. No? Maybe about six or eight feet might help. One foot isn't going to help me. Why do you get back to that spitball? Now, I know that you don't throw a <laughs> spitball, but uh, uh, do you, when you work in spring training on that spitball, uh, what are you working in? Uh, I don't work on it. Uh, there's uh, a couple of the fellas, the last, you know, they haven't seen them. They want to know uh, how it reacts, and I'll throw a few. Uh-huh. But uh, once the season starts, it's, it's not allowed. Well, why do you stay right where you are? Because we're going to talk more about that spitball in just a minute, fans. Here's Lobo. <laughs> Howdy again, baseball fans. Our left-hand pitcher here, the great left hand of the New York Yankees pitching staff. Why do we have about 30 seconds more? I'd like to ask you after the baseball season's all over and you get through the World Series, what do you do? Well, Jez, I live about 16 miles from here in Long Island called a little town called Lake Success. And all I do is play golf until it gets too cold. Uh-huh. Then we head to Florida. Whitey. Thank you for being with us, Whitey Ford, and the best of luck to you from all of your fans all over the country. Keep throwing that fastball in there, boy. Thanks for these tips you gave me today, Dizzy. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Whitey <laughs> Ford. And fans, Pee Wee Reese now will be bringing the baseball game in just a minute. Leading off for the Indians will be Dick Hauser at shortstop. Batting second will be Vic Davalio playing center field. Batting third will be Leon Wagner in left field. He has 22 home runs, 64 runs batted in, batting 266. Hauser's batting 235. Davalio batting 258. The big fellow that won the ball game yesterday batted in three runs for the Indians. Bob Chance at first base, just a rookie, hit a triple in the top half of the 15th inning to drive in one run, and he was squeezing from third base. Bob Chance, 11 home runs, 49 runs batted in, batting 339. Batting fifth, Tito Francona in right field. John Romano will be doing the catching. Batting six. Larry Brown at second base, batting seventh. Woody Hell at third base, batting eighth. And the pitchers, I told you, Sam McDowell, batting ninth with a record of three and three. The New York Yankees playing shortstop will be Phil Lind leading off. At second base will be Bobby Richardson, batting second. Batting third will be Hector Lopez, playing right field. You can see Yogi Berra has made a switch there. He's put two right and hitters in there against Sam McDowell. Phil Lenz at shortstop and Hector Lopez in right field. Mickey Mantle batting in a cleanup spot playing center field. Mickey has 18 home runs, 57 runs batted in. There go the Yankees taking the field. Batting fifth will be Tommy Tresh in left field. Batting sixth, the catcher, Elston Howard. Batting seventh, playing first base, another switch. Getting a little more right-handed power, and there's Pedro Gonzalez playing first base. Cleet Boyer batting eighth, playing third base. And the pitcher batting ninth, Roland Sheldon. For the Cleveland Indians will be Dick Howes with a little shortstop. Which is Swan, there's a bouncing ball through the pitcher's mound, and the second baseman, Richardson, makes a great play, and then throws him out at first base. And listen to this crowd. First great play of this ball game today, made by the little second soccer, Bobby Richardson. That ball was hit sharply right by the pitcher, and you've seen on your screen that the little second soccer, Bobby Richardson, went over to his right, backhand the ball, stopped, and fired the ball to the first baseman for the out. Gonzalez playing first today, one away, and this brings up the next batter, Davalio. The son- swings and fouls that ball on the ground behind the plate. And- Swings and fouls the ball down. Swings and there's a line drive in the right field or a base hit. Right fielder picks that ball up. Lopez and fires it back into the infield. And it's the first hit of the ball game. Talking with Yogi Bear, the manager today, he says, Diz, he says, I'm going to try to give some of my regulars a little rest. And he says, I think I'll be ready then for that five-game series coming up with the Detroit Ball Club in three days. Two double headers in three days. They're up there now with a the runner on first and one out. 
Stunned. There's a throw to first base, but he got back in time. Pitch. Swings and fouls the ball. Behind the plate, hires off to the mask, goes back. He can't get to the ball. It drops into the stands. There's a, there's a bouncing ball. The second sucker has it. He goes to second for one. The throw to first, not in time. That Bobby Richardson is quite a second sucker. He went to his left on that one, grabbed the ball, and forced the runner at second base. Shortstop Lynn's covering, forcing out the runner there, Devalio. And there's two men gone, and this brings up the next batter. Boy, the guy that gave the Yankees a lot of trouble yesterday. Bob Chance, the next pitch is swung on and foul back into the screen. Swings and fouls the ball down the left field line. Boy, they're playing this guy way around the right, and he hit that ball to the opposite field. Pitch. Swings and fouls that ball out of play. There's a swing and a miss. He went for a low inside pitch and struck out. The catcher, Howard, dropped the ball, picked it up, and fired the ball over to the first baseman, Gonzalez, for the out. So that retires. The Cleveland Indians here in the top of the first inning. No runs on one hit. No errors, and they had one man left on base. The score after one half inning of play, Cleveland nothing, and the Yankees come into bat. As we move to the last half of the first inning, no score in the ball game as the Yankees come to bat. Yogi Bear starting his regular lineup yesterday in that 15-inning ball game. Today he shuffled it around a little bit and changed his lineup. And the leadoff hitter today, Phil Lenz. Next pitch swung on, and there's a little puff line to right field. That ball's going to drop in there for a base hit. Lenz rounds first, starts for second, but the right fielder hustles that ball back in there. Francona. And it's a single for Lenz. To bring up the next batter, Bobby Richardson. The second it is, and it's a little bit outside. McDowell. Pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. And Lenz was not moving. So with one away, this will bring up the right fielder, Hector Lopez. There's a pitch that gets waiting from the catcher, and Lenz moves down to second. Romana recovers that ball. We'll see whether it's a fast ball or a wild pitch. It's a wild pitch by the pitcher, McDowell. Swings, and there's a high pop foul out of play to the right. Nelson. There's in there for a strike two call. That evens a count up. Finally gets set. Here's a two and two pitch. Swings and fouls that ball on the ground to the left. Falls in two strikes. Here's the next pitch. He swings and misses strike three. Hector Lopez went down swinging his two men out. This brings up Mickey Manlin. Listen to the crowd. Mickey Mantle going into this ball game is hitting 328. He has 18 home runs and 57 runs batted in. And immediately the catcher, Romana, goes out to talk to McDowell. Good car. First pitch to him is low inside for ball one. The next pitch, swung on and fouled out of play back into the stands. And it evens a count up at one ball and one strike. Here's a pitch and it's low inside for ball two. Almost hit him on the end step. Count of two and one. Here's the pitch. Swings and fouls the ball. To the left. It looked like a hit right off his left foot there. I think he's down on one knee. Now he gets up. Chow looking down for a signal. Taking a lot of time out there on the mound. We're in the last half of the first inning. Romana giving a signal. Mickey Mantle waiting with a count of two and two. And fans, it is really warm here in New York today. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Cracking out. So this guy struck out the side. It retires the Yankees. No runs on one hit, no errors, and they had one man left on base. The score after one complete inning of play, Cleveland nothing, and the Yankees nothing. Dino Francona leads things off for Cleveland here in the top of the second inning. No score in the ball game. First pitch to him is full on, and there's a drive going to right field. That ball hit hard. Hit in there for a home run. On the first pitch, fans, Tito Francona lined that ball into the seats in right field for the first run of the ball game, and there he comes around third base. Tito Francona coming in to score, and the Cleveland Indians lead one to nothing. 
Going into this ball game, Tito Francona was hitting 267. Had three home runs. Now he's got four. And 12 runs batted in now. There he is going over in the Cleveland dugout. And Romano, the catcher, is the next batter up there. Cleveland leading one to nothing now. First pitch is swung on. There's a high pop fly going foul down the third baseline. Boyer's over under the ball. He makes a catch for out number one. One away here in the top half of the second inning. Almer Vallow coaching at first base for Cleveland. Great outfielder for the Philadelphia A's for many years. There he is, right there, fans, clapping his hands, hollering. Great outfielder, wonderful player. Next pitch, next batter in there is Brown takes the first pitch, and it's ball one high. One ball and no strikes, one away, and the Cleveland Indians winning one to nothing. There's Sally Hemus over there at third base, coaching. Broke in his playing days with the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the next pitch. It's high for ball two, and it's two and nothing. Two balls and no strikes. Sheldon, big right-hander out there on the mound. Trading now one to nothing as Tito Francona hit a line drive in the right field seats. Next pitch is crack. One call, a fastball. Two balls and a strike. Short talking to general manager Gabe Paul of the Cleveland Indians. Yesterday after the ball game, the Dears were going to celebrate winning our first game from the Yankees in 15 innings this year. There's a high pop foul back here over our heads in the upper deck for strike two. That evens the count up at two and two with one out here in the top half of the second inning. They're playing Brown just about straight away, not too deep in the outfield. Here's the pitch. Swung on there to fly ball going deep in the left field. That ball's tagged way back there. It is out of here for a home run, man. Here he comes, crossing the plate for the second run of the inning, making his 10th home run and his 26th run batted in now. Larry Brown, the second soccer, gets a nice hand from his teammates in the Cleveland dugout. Cleveland leading two to nothing here now, and this brings up Woody Hill, the third soccer. Two runs, two home runs. Woody Hill up there, swings to the end of that bat. First pitch to him is in there for strike one call. Next pitch is strike two call. Look like a slider. And it's two or nothing. Two strikes. Count on Woody Hill. There's a foul ball hit deep in the left field seats. Well, so far, I'd have to say that this fellow, Sheldon, is throwing that home run ball. The catcher, Elson Howard, immediately goes out there and talks to this guy. Probably says, whatever you're throwing, it's not the right pitch today. Try to find one. Find, try to find the right one. As Woody Hill hit that ball hard in the left field seat, foul. Count of two strikes, one out here in the top of the second inning. Here's the next pitch. He swings and misses at a high fastball and strikes out. That makes two men away as the Yankees whip that ball around the infield and it springs up the old pitcher himself, the old slugger. Sam McDowell, his batting average is 0-4-0. He has no home run and no runs batted in. <laughs> Left-hand hitter, Sam McDowell.
First pitch to him is a fastball high for ball one. He will now be in the National League next Saturday and Sunday in Philadelphia with the St. Louis Cardinals. Boy, that National League could be bottom side up for the next 10 days. There's a strike call that even to count up at one and one. The San Francisco Giants have lost five straight ball games. They lost one yesterday after leading one to nothing in the last of the ninth inning, and the Colts scored two runs to beat them. Here's the next pitch. He starts a swing, helps back, and it's in there for strike two call. One ball and two strikes. Here's the next pitch. Low for ball two. It evens the count up at two and two. Two balls and two strikes, two outs, and the Cleveland Indians leading by a score of two to nothing. Playing this big fella for a full head and right. Next pitch is swung on and missed. Far strike three. So for the Cleveland Indians here in the top half of the second inning, it picked up two runs on two hits. No errors, and they had no one left on base. Fans, thus pause for station identification with the score, the Cleveland Indians two and the Yankees nothing. We start the last half of the second inning. Two to nothing in favor of Cleveland as the Yankees come to bat. Tom Trash, the left fielder, leads things off. A switch hitter batting right-handed against the left-hand pitching of Sam McDowell. Going into this ball game, Tom Trash is hitting 262. He has 10 home runs and 46 runs batted in. As Steve has often said, this guy comes to play. First pitch to him is high for ball one. One ball and no strikes. We told the Yankees. Lost in 15 innings, 6 to 4 yesterday, Cleveland. Here's the next pitch. And it's low for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Tom Trash leading things off here for the Yankees. McDowell's a very slow worker. Talking with Jimmy Dudley, the broadcaster for Cleveland. There's a high foul going out of play to the right. Stands. Far strike one. Jimmy says it is. He says, you and Pee Wee uh, have a, probably a long afternoon because this Sam McDowell is a pretty slow worker. Yes, what do you think that, that makes a pitcher like this? Of course, I know he throws real hard. How does it make one pitcher wild? Three and two most of the time. Of course, it's just a young fellow. What makes a pitcher wow? Pee Wee, that's a hard question for me to answer. Here's the next pitch. Swung on, and there's a fly ball hit in the right field. That ball's going to drop out there for a base hit. And Pee Wee, it's a good question, too. I've often wondered myself. It's either a pitcher is trying to pitch too fine and just missing, or he's just naturally wild. I like to see a guy that is a little bit wild but not as wild as some of these guys. This three and two on every hitter, Pee Wee, it tires you out, brother, and it's pretty rough. Sure and does, Diz, and I was just thinking about Colfax, how wild he used to be. Yeah. He was even more wild than this fellow right here, and all of a sudden, he finds himself. Now he's got his better, better control than he won the league. Elson Hart swings on the first pitch, and there's a base hit into center field. Mike Press goes over to third base, and the center fielder, Devilio, picks the ball up, fires it back into the infield. And the Yankees have runners on first and third with nobody out here in the last half of the second inning. And Gonzalez, the first soccer, is the next batter up there. You've seen on your screen now that the shortstop, Hauser, barely touched that ball with his glove, bounced off his glove in the center field for a base hit. And Fresh moved from first to third. And the Yankees are threatening. They trail two to nothing, but they have the tying runs on base here in the last half of the second inning. McDowell, the big left-hander, is pitching to Gonzalez now, the first soccer. Right-hand hitter. He starts a swing. Did he go around? No, sir. The umpire says no, and it's ball one. Gonzalez, the first soccer, batting 258, has no home runs and two runs batted in so far in the ball in the, this season. Gonzalez. Here's the next pitch. Bangs and there's a drive in the center field. The center fielder comes in fast. He can't get to the ball. 
It's a base hit. Here comes one run scoring. Fresh scores from third base. Hard moves to third, and it's a double for Gonzalez. There's Howard at third base, fans. And there's Gonzalez at second, and you've seen on your screen, Davileo, the center fielder, came in there and tried to make a shoestring catch. Couldn't quite make it, dove and turned a somersault, and by the time the right fielder recovered the ball and got it back into the infield, Elston Howard had run from first to third, and Gonzalez moved into second with a double, scoring Tom Fresh, and the Cleveland Indians has lead is cut to two to one. This brings up Peter Spoyer now. Nobody out, runners on second and third here for the Yankees, the last half off the second inning. Fans, a lot of action here today. Going to be a lot of action in this ball game. McDowell fires the first pitch, is swung on, and there's a foul in the right field for a base hit. Here comes two more runs across the plate. Yankee dugout, Cletus Boyer, lined a single to right center, scoring two more runs, Howard and Gonzalez, and the Yankees lead now three to two, still nobody out, and the next batter up there is Sheldon, the pitcher. McDowell fires the first pitch to him, and it's in there for strike one call. The fact he spread around as if to bunt that ball and missed it. One strike to count. Nobody out here for the Yankees. We're in the last of the second. The Cleveland Indians made two runs on two home runs. Vito Francona and Brown put him out in front two to nothing. But the Yankees have come back here and scored three runs now. Still nobody out and runner on first. Next pitch is inside for ball one. That even to count up at one ball and one strike. Sheldon, batting 133, has no home runs and one run batted in. The umpire, Flaherty, sweeps off home plate. A lot of action today. Boy, and there's a lot of action going on right now in Columbus, too. PGA Golf Tournament. Looking forward to see what's going to happen. Oh, there's a punt out to the pitcher. He's going to second the throw. He is out at second base. Cletus Boyer is forced there by the pitcher, McDowell, who grabbed that bunny ball, whipped over to the shortstop, Hauser, covering and they forced Boyer for the first out. One away. Talking about the tournament in PGA and Columbus. Bobby Nicholson is still hanging on there, leading by one shot over Arnold Palmer. And the kids got a good chance to win it. Mason Rudolph is in third place. Four to 30 this afternoon. Over CBS, we'll be carrying that. They'll be carrying that golf tournament. A lot of action. First pitch down to Lenz is inside and low for ball one. One out here in the last half of the second inning. A gal fires the next pitch. It's high for ball two, and it's two and nothing. Looking in the standings here, I certainly want to congratulate a wonderful guy, 52 years old, be 53 his next birthday, Ben Hogan, who's making a great showing down there. I believe he's only about six shots off of the lead. 2-10. Next pitch is low for ball three, and it's three and nothing. One away here for the Yankees. Yeah, little Bobby Nicholson, Pee Wee, is from your hometown, Louisville. Sure is, Dad. Of course, I'll be pulling for old Bobby today. I played golf with him quite a bit when he comes back to Louisville. He used to caddy out the club where I belong. How many strokes does he give you, Pee? I mean, you give him, Pee Wee. Not enough. <laughs> I mean, how many strokes do you give me? <laughs> He's a mighty fine little golfer, partner. Get that ball as far as any of them. I'll say that for him. Bobby Richardson up there. Now, I mean, uh, lands up there now with a count of three balls and no strikes. Next pitch is in there for strike one call. Three and one on Lenz. Now he looks down to third base coach Frankie Crossetti for a hitter take sign with one away and a runner on first. Sheldon. McDowell, taking a lot of time now, looks down for a signal from his catcher, Romana, goes into the stretch, runner on first, leads off the pitch. He's struck two, call out of the throw to first base, but 
Sheldon, the pitcher, wasn't too far off. He took one step back, and he was on the bag. Three and two with one away. We'll see whether the pitcher will be running. Here it is. Ball four, it's low. Sheldon moves to second. Lynn moves down to first, and this brings up a little second soccer, Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson struck out his first time up there. A good crowd here at Yankee Stadium today. Jim Leeson, Jim Leeson coaching at first base, saying something to Lenz. Bobby, watch the line drive now with one out. Bobby Richardson, the second sacker up there. Sheldon on second. Lenz on first, the pitch. Swung out, there's a bouncing ball. And it hit, hit. It hit the bag, looks like. And the time the third baseman, Hill got a hold of the ball. He couldn't make a play, and it's a base hit. So the bases are loaded, fans, with only one out, and Hector Lopez, the next batter up there. The Yankees leading 3-2. to two. They've scored three times here. They made five hits so far in this inning. And they're still up there with the bases jammed. Here's the first pitch down to Hector Lopez. It's high for ball one. He's got a hostage. Either Bertie Tebbets or George Strickland will be coming out of that dugout pretty soon of the Cleveland Indians. Get those seven, don't I? There's a foul back into the screen, and it evens the count up at one and one. One ball and one strike. One and one, went out, and the base is loaded. Back down with a new baseball. Winds and fires the next pitch. It's swung on and missed a fastball. Brother, he had powder on that one. Or strike two. One ball and two strikes. take their lead. Hector Lopez up there with a count of one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls the ball back into the screen. Boy, they'll have a lot of fun here in, in New York City this week with all the sliners from everywhere. The country visiting here for a big get-together. Understand the Shriners Clown will be here to visit all the crippled children hospitals throughout the territory of New York. I know that the kids will all be happy to see you. There's ball two, and it evens the count up at two and two. Yes, sir, anything we can do to help those little girls and boys? Do our best. Here's the two and two pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play. Back into the stands. And the count remains, two balls and two strikes. One out, the base is still loaded. Yes, sir, the Sliners are a great organization. The Yankees leading this ball game three to two. They're playing Hector Lopez for a right field hitter. Center fielders moved over towards right center, figuring this guy will hit that way. There's ball three, it's high, and it's the full count of three and two now. balls and two strikes, fans, here in the last half of the second inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit again. Foul to the right back in the stands. And it's still three and two. Only one out. Hector Lopez went down swinging. And 
two men out. This brings up Mickey Mantle with a base and loaded fans. You couldn't be in a tougher spot. Mickey Mantle up there, fans. You hear the roar go up in the stands here. The bases loaded, two out. The Yankees leading three to two. And as I say, you can't be in a tougher spot than this. McDowell winds and fires the first pitch. It's in there for strike one ball. And last part of the crowd here at Yankee Stadium, fans. Talking about the crowd. The eighth of next month, the old-timers game here in New York. Always look forward for that. Here's the next pitch. Swings and fouls the ball back into the screen for strike two. Two strikes on Mickey Mantle. Certainly glad we got one thing straight about Mickey the day we had him on the pregame show. Asked him which he's a better hitter right-handed or left and he said this, I'm a better hitter right-handed. Two strikes a count on him now. Back down with the new baseball, has the signal, goes into that top panel windup, the pitch. It's a fastball, high for ball one. One ball and two strikes. Two outs and the base is jammed. A few fans ever were enjoying the ball game today. Sitting back, relaxing. Here's the one and two pitch. Swires a bouncing ball. And the pitcher grabs the ball, turns, throws over to first base to check. And it retires the Yankees, but they picked up three runs on five hits, no errors, and they had three big men left on the bases. So the score after two complete innings of play, it's the Yankees three, Cleveland two. At the top of the third inning, three to two in favor of the Yankees as the Cleveland Indians come to bat. And coming back to the microphone now is my partner, Pee Wee Reed. Pee Wee, come on in, partner. Thank you, Diz. You had a couple of long ones right there. I'll say I that. I mean a tough one, boy. <laughs> Here's the score here in Yankee Stadium, the game of the week. CBS game of the week between the Indians and the Yankees. The funny thing about it, only walked one man. He was three and one and three and two on all the hitters. They have three runs and six hits, and he struck out five, five men in those two innings. Dick Hauser up there right now leading things off in innings. First to Hauser, the ball is popped up out in the right field. Bobby Richardson goes back. Hector Lopez comes in. There he is. Takes it. For out number one. Lopez going back to his position. The Yankees whipped that ball around the infield. The Yankees made a few changes today with Sam McDowell, the hard-throwing left-hander in there. Instead of Pepitone at first base, they put Gonzalez, a right-hander hitter. Instead of Maris in right field, Hector Lopez. Instead of Quebec at shortstop, they put Phil in. Yogi Berra going that right-handed power. Davalio, the line drive right in the center field. Mickey Mantle takes it on one hop. Bars that ball back, and there's Davalito going back into first base. So Vic is two for two today. Davalillo came into this ball game batting 252. You have to watch this fellow at first base, too. It's 14 stolen bases. Leon Wagner. Foul right straight back for Leon Wagner. Mix. Ball hit out to Bobby Richards. It may be a double play over to Phil Lenz for one. They'll never get him. You can see where Bobby's playing. He was playing Leon Wagner way over toward first base. Hey. Brings up Big Bob Chance. Hello. Bobby Richardson. Bobby Fine hits him on the arm. Out in the right field. Richardson out there to retrieve it and going over to third base. That's Leon Wagner. Makes a turn. Makes a bluff. Bob Chance holds right close to first base. It's an error on Bobby Richardson. You don't see that happen too often. Just in this game alone. There's Tito Francona coming up to bat. He had Frank Cohen hits the ball hard, but shouldn't be any trouble for Mickey Mantle. He's drifting back. He's underneath the ball and takes it for the third out. That's all for Frank Cohen. That's all for the Indians here in the 
top half the third inning. No runs, one hit, one error, and two men left on base. We have the two and one half innings of Pets, New York Yankees three, and the Cleveland Indians two. It's another hot day here in New York. Good day for a ball game. If you like hot weather. We saw this fellow start the inning off the last time for the Yankees. The Yankees batted around. In the bottom half of the second inning. He only scored three runs though. Tommy Trash started things off. There's a ball that's popped up. Foul territory. Bob Chance comes over and calls for it and takes it for out number one. Bob Chance takes first baseman for the Indians. Talking about this McDowell being a little wild. Still believe this fellow is going to be a real fine pitcher. He has what it takes to be a great pitcher. A good fastball, a good curveball. Someone can teach him how to get that ball over. He's just a kid. Elston Howard up there right now. Elston Howard. Hopper right back to him. He bats it up in the air and comes down with it. Over to Bob Chance. So it's two up and two down here in the bottom half of the third inning. Sometimes, honestly, I believe, I was talking to Diz about it. There's Gonzalez stepping in there. He got a single his last time up there. He got a double, rather. Driving a run, he also scored a run. Fellow so, like McDowell used to be like this way. Koufax used to be. It takes a lot of time out there. It's pretty hard to get any rhythm when you take too much time on that mound, I believe. Looks like Gonzalez wanted to check his swing there. That ball still fouled it back here in our booth. But near, there's a ground ball out to Dick Howell. It takes a big hop. He'll have to hurry. That Gonzalez can foul. They got him. So here in the bottom half, third inning, the Yankees. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We have the three full innings of play. It's the Yankees three and the Cleveland Indians two. The strikeout leaders in the American League, Pasquale, he leads the American League at 112. Then this big relief pitcher up at Boston, Raditz, he has 100 left. Ford has, Whitey Ford has 110. Wickersham 109. Stigman 106 and Pena 105. In the National League, Koufax 156. John Romano, swing a miss on a high fastball. He was a cap. He started held up at the umpire. John Flaherty said it had the outside corner. One, that's where it was and just where he threw it. A good curveball by Roland Sheldon caught John Romano looking. So Sheldon gets his fourth strikeout in this ball game. A lot of strikeouts. Brown, Brown, line drive, base hit out in the right field. Hector Lopez up with the ball. Those are the cutoff man. There's Larry Brown making the turn back in the first base. So he hits a home on the left. And just lines one in the right field. He's this time up there. He's two for two today. Woody Hell struck out his first time up. Swing and a miss. A swing and a miss. He struck him out on a curveball. So Woody Hell, the first two times of the day, takes that big K. That's a fifth strikeout for Roland Sheldon. Walking back there, picking up that rosin bag. On at first base, it's Larry Brown. Up at the plate, the big pitcher, Sam McDowell. Didn't even stride then. He fouled the ball. Two away. Another foul. Back. He struck him out. Roland Sheldon, after Larry Brown gets a single, he strikes out the side. That's his sixth strikeout. So that's all for the Indians in the top half of the fourth inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. So after three and one half innings of play, it's still the Yankees three and the Cleveland Indians two. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Cleet Boy will be the first hitter for the Yankees. He hits the first pitch out in the left field. Leon Wagner moves in, over, and takes it for out number one. Roland Sheldon. There's Wagner going back to his position. Wagner, they got that fellow from the Angels. What a year over there.
Roland Sheldon. Swing and a miss. And two pitch. Foul right back on the screen. Accepted to be here. There's another foul off the right back. It's Berger, Milwaukee, no score after two. Another foul off the right. He's two fire. He struck him out. Yes, sir. That was a real good fastball. Sheldon talking to John Flaherty. That's the fifth strikeout. Fifth strikeout for McDowell. We had someone else struck out there a while ago. We found out that he didn't strike out. Phil ends up there right now, two away. It's fastball right over our head. Strike two. Curveball and a dandy. And that's number six for Sam McDowell. That's off the Yankees here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. So the score. After four innings of play, the New York Yankees three, the Cleveland Indians two. The top half of the fifth inning. The first hitter. For the Indians will be the little leadoff man, Dick House of the shortstop. Pitches a curveball, front of the bouncing ball, hit to the third baseman. Boyer has it to throw to first. He's out at first base for out number one. One away, and the Yankees whip that ball around. In the American League, Devalio up there. High for ball two, and it's two or nothing. One pitch is in there for strike two call. That even to count up at two and two. Swung on. There's a high pop fly in the center field. Center field and Mickey Mantle's right there under the ball and makes a catch for out number two. That makes two men away now. Nobody on base. Three to two in favor of the Yankees. Brings up the next batter, Leon Wagner. Wagner swings and misses. A foul ball, rather. And it's strike two call. A, foul, a curve that's low inside. There's ball too high inside. And he, there's a drive going deep in the center field. Mickey Mantle moves over to his right. The left fielder moves over Tom Fresh and it's Mickey Mantle who makes the catch for the third out to retire the side. Tom for Cleveland here in the top of the fifth inning. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, and no errors, no one left on base. Score after four and one half inning to play. It's the Yankees three, the Cleveland Indians two. Fans will move to the last half of the fifth inning, three to two ball game. As we told you, both these clubs scored in the second inning. It's been nothing but goose egg. Still got a long ways to go. Bobby Richardson leads things off. Here for the Yankees. Both these pitchers look very shaky there in the second inning. Settle down. Here's the first pitch to Bobby Richardson swung on, and there is a base hit in the center field. There he is at first base as Devilio, the center fielder, picks that ball up. Fires it back into the infield. And there's a little runner at first base. Bobby Richardson, number one. Opening up with a single here in the last half of the fifth inning. This brings up the next batter. Hector Lopez. Right fielder. Can hit that ball to all fields. Wind is going slightly across from right to left. McDowell fires the first pitch high for ball one. One ball and no strike. Yes, the fans, if you ever get the chance to come to New York, the World Fair, be sure and come out to Yankee Stadium. See a ball game. Two, three, or four. Here's the next pitch. There goes a the runner swung on and fouled out of play. And it evens the count up with one ball and one strike. I say one thing about this Yankee ball club. Boy, they hit and run a lot. They've got their ball club on the move. One ball and one strike. This guy, Hector Lopez, can hit behind that runner. There's Yogi Berra. What a guy. What a guy, fan. What a catcher he was. The one and one pick. And it's high. Looked like a curveball. For ball two. Boy, there's a fine breeze, Pee Wee. Beautiful yes, breeze. Is. Two balls in one strike. Nobody out. And Bobby Richardson rest, resting on first base. Here's a pitch. There goes the runner. Swung on and foul. Down the third baseline. And again, Bobby Richardson was on his on his move. On that pitch. And it was foul. So it's two balls and two strikes now. There's the 
Big first baseman you've seen, Chance, along with Bobby Richardson, the runner at first. There they are, talking the situation over the runner. Bobby Richardson turns around, looks at the umpire, who's right on top of the play at all times. And the two and two pitch. Bonner is a base hit, it'll go for extra bases. Bobby Richardson goes into third base standing up. And there is Richardson at third. And there is Hector Lopez at second base. So the Yankees open up here in the last half of the fifth inning with runners on second and third. Nobody out. And coming to the plate. Yes, Mickey Mantle, the center fielder, batting 328 going into this ball game. Mickey Mantle. Mike Dowell in trouble here in the last of the fifth inning. Fires the first pitch. It's a curve inside and high for ball one. Well, there's ball two. They're going to walk in first now. There's ball three. There's ball four, and Mickey Mantle has walked first to load him up. And I guarantee you, fans, it's pretty doggone rough to walk, have to walk a fellow like this and then bring a guy like this coming to the plate. Tom Fresh. These Yankees have got four or five guys in that middle lineup that, brother, it's just hardy. It's really rough to have to walk one guy to get to another. Either one of them is capable of hitting the ball nine miles. Fresh has ten home runs. Switch hitter batting right handed against the left hand pitching. Nobody out here for the Yankees. We're in the last half of the fifth. Here's the pitch. Bonner's a bouncing ball. Could be two. Nelson, to the ball bouncing over the shortstop's head. It'll be a base hit, fan. That'll be a base hit. Now, there was absolutely a ball labeled for a double play. A perfect double play ball. And show you what the breaks are in this game. The shortstop Powder came in to, to grab that ball on the second bounce, and what did you see on your screen? A high bounce over his head into left center field for a base hit. That's the breaks of the game. It's how the ball bounced, and there looks like a definitely a double play because Precious has that bad leg, doesn't run too well. A perfect double play ball that took a bad hop and bounced over Howes of the shortstop's head for a single. Scoring two runs and sending the runner Mickey Mantle all the way to third. Howard up there now takes the first pitch low for ball one. Pee Wee, as a shortstop for 20 years, you've had those things to happen, and there's nothing you can do about a ball like that. No, sir, Diz. Uh, you're ready. There he is, Dick Howard, is sitting there ready for just a, thinking about getting that ball to the second base. And all of a sudden, she hops up. He got his glove on the ball, but the ball right at the last minute hopped up over his head. That's like Quebec in the World Series. Ball bounced up, made him in the throat. Howard hits a ground ball to the short top. He had over to second for one, over to first. It's a double play. There was a double play. It's just like the other was, but it stayed down. And Hauser grabbed the ball, whipped it over to Brown to second, forcing out the runner there. Fresh. In the throw to first base, he's a double left Howard for a double play. In the meantime, Mickey Mantle scores from third base to make the score now six to two in favor of the Yankees. With you two know, out, yeah, Pee Wee. You know, Des, that infield looks awfully smooth from sitting here in the stands. But you'd be surprised sometime when you get out at no, get out on that infield and the runners making the turn there around shortstop and stopping cut that infield up quite a bit. It's not as smooth as it looks. There's no question about that, Pee Wee. The next pitch is swung on and foul tip. And it evens the count up at one and one. Yes, the ball players digging around those bases, cutting up that field. You notice the in all these ballparks now that they have the ground crew after five innings of play to drag the infield. That's to try to smooth the infield up. And it is rough out there around the fourth or fifth inning when those players have done a lot of running and jobbing around. That ball hits one of those fleet marks out there, a little divot. And brother, that's all she wrote. There you see second base. One ball and one strike, two out. Next pitch, he tries to bunt the ball and foul it. Gonzalez up there. You know, there's a. I live right close to a park, Seneca Park in Louisville. Coming to the park occasionally, I stop and watch the Little Leaguers play. And you have to admire those little devils. 
because those infields and <laughs> that sandlot ball are really rough to stay down on those ground balls the way they do. There's a bouncing foul down the third baseline. Yes, there's no question about that, Pee Wee. I remember when we used to play ball back in Arkansas and those country towns. And we lived on the farm and we had made our own ball field, make our own bases. How'd Brother, you make your own bases, Diz? We put just anything we get out there for bases. Yes, sir, Pee Wee, it was rough. We'd cut out and we'd clear the ground first on a lot of places. We'd cut those persimmon sprouts. Now, you probably don't know what persimmon sprouts is. I know what persimmons are. I didn't say that. I said, do you know what persimmon sprouts are? No, but tell me. A lot of people in, that I'm talking to right now know what they are. Persimmon sprouts is, there's a foul back into the screen and the count remains. One ball and two strikes. That's a little persimmon bush, Pee Wee. And brother, they come up thick sometimes in that new ground. Did you ever flirt a plow in new ground? No, sir. That's another rough deal, too. Did you ever clear ground? No, Diz, I was born in a small town about 50 miles from Louisville on a farm. I mean, really on a farm, but I moved to Louisville when I was about seven or eight years old, so I don't know too much about farming. Next pitch is high inside. It's a duck to get out of there. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Pee Wee, I was uh, raised on a little farm, too, down in Lucas, Arkansas, and I was about seven or eight years old. You weren't still, plowing then, were you? I was plowing and also picking cotton and clearing new ground. I certainly was, Pee Wee. Here's the next pitch. A swing and a miss, and Gonzalez goes down swinging for the third out here. But the Yankees, they picked up three runs on three hits, no errors, and they had one man left on base. Fans left pause for station identification. With the score, the Yankees six, the Cleveland Indians two. Half the six inning, six to three in favor of Cleveland Indians. Pee Wee and I just reminiscing here about when we was kids and talking about plowing with double shovels, tires. And I said, Pee Wee, you know what those are? He says, No. You know what a pole axe is, Pee Wee? A what? A pole axe. A pole axe. Yeah. Or a double, a, a double bladed axe. You know what that is? I know what axes are. I've what is a pole choice. axe? A pole axe. Tell me what a pole axe is. <laughs> well, that's the one bladed axe, Pee Wee. That's on a handle, just like a double-bladed axe, but you can only cut with one side of it. Well, sure, that's just an old And you can drive with the other end side of it. Yeah, I know what that is. Well, it's a I pole axe. I can chop. Huh? I can chop wood. You can really cut wood. Oh, yeah. Both sides, you know. <laughs> Chance leads things off here for the Cleveland Indians and takes the first pitch low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. What'd you ask me what a girt was? That's the goes on a horse, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right, Pee Wee. A girt. One ball and no strikes. You're you're all right. You have been there. I've been there. <laughs> sure, I've been there. <laughs> Here's the next pitch. Swung on as a bouncing ball. One hopper right back to Sheldon. He grabbed it, turned, throws to first base, and chance is out. One away, and the Yankees throw that ball around the infield. It springs up the next batter. Tell you one thing, Diz. Down in Brandenburg, Kentucky, around Battletown, I, I can ask ain't bad or Uncle Joe. And they can tell you about all those things. Y'all gone right, boy. They know what it is. Well, I've been there, Pee Wee. I'll guarantee you, I've been there, partner. You haven't done too much plowing, though, did I haven't, huh? No, no. Well, you just ask, ask people down where I was born and raised, boy. Francona swings on the first pitch, and there's a high fly ball into center field. Mickey Mantle goes over and makes the catch to his right for out number two. So on the first pitch, Tito Francona Slide out to the center field of Mickey Mantle. The last time is up there on the first pitch. He lined one in the seats for a home run. So with two men out, this brings up the next batter now. Larry Brown, or not Larry Brown, but uh, John Romano, the catcher. John Romano. First pitch is swung on and missed for strike one. You know what a turning plow is, I know. You turn the soil with it. That's right, boy. Man, you're getting smart, buddy. <laughs> You'll be a farmer yet. <laughs> Next pitch to Romano. Try to hold back and accidentally foul the ball for strike two. Pee Wee, did you ever shock oats? Shock Oats? Yeah. Shocked hay, corn. You ever bale hay? Sure, I've seen them bale hay. Oh, I My didn't mother, say that. she's I listening. Did you ever bale any hay? 
No, sir. Besides that green stuff you have in the bank <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> Here's the next pitch in this high of a ball. One, one ball and two strikes. Romano the batter. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls that ball on the ground. And it's still one ball and two strikes. Two outs here for the Indians in the top half of the sixth inning. Other scores, Philadelphia 4, Cincinnati nothing after four innings of play. After three innings of play, the New York Mets won. The Cardinals won. American League, Boston 7, Washington 2 after four. The one and two pitch to Romano. Swung on as a one hopper. A shortstop win, knocks the ball down. Fired over to first base to Gonzalez. And Romano is out for the third out to retire the side. So for Cleveland here in the top of the sixth inning, three up and three down, no runs, no hits, and no errors, and no one left on base. Score after five and one half inning to play, the Yanks six, and the Cleveland Indians two. Move to the last half of the sixth inning. Six to two in favor of the Yankees as they come to bat. Cletus Boyer leads things off. Listen to the jingles, the rumble and the roar as she glides along the woodlands to the hills and by the shore. She's mighty tall and handsome. She's known quite well by all. She's a combination of the Wabash Cannonball. There you are. Here's to Daddy Collection, may his name forever stand. May it always be remembered in the courts throughout the land. When his earthy race is over and the curtains round him fall, we'll carry him home to victory on the Wabash Cannonball. The first pitch here to see this lawyer <laughs> is low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. The last half of the sixth inning, six to two in favor of the Yankees. Next pitch is in there for strike one. Call it even to count up at one and one. Cletus Boyer leading things off. Gene Kirby's youngest boy, Glenn Kirby. I think he's about six, seven now in eight. Glenn, eight. He's ten years old. He's the farmer in the family. He loves to farm. One ball and two strikes to count on Cletus Boyer. Yes, sir, that boy, he's, he's going to always make it because he loves to farm. There's a high fly ball into right center field. The center fielder, Devalio, is over and makes the catch for out number one. One away here. This brings up the old slugger himself, fans, Mr. Sheldon. Rolling Sheldon up there. First pitch to him is in there for strike one call. Yeah, little Glenn Kirby here is out to see the ball game today. He's got a couple of black Angus calves up there on the farm, and we're going to ask him about it in a minute. Next pitch is in there for strike two call. I understand, did that he thought he had two black Angus calves. One of them turned out to be a Guernsey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get his. Uh, of what he's got over there in a minute. We're going to talk to him if we possibly can. He's right over to our right here. Two strikes to count on Sheldon. Roland Sheldon with one out here in the last half of the sixth inning. Next pitch is ball one outside. One ball and two strikes. Roland Shellen, the pitcher, hit that ball hard right over the shortstop hand. For a hard single to left field and puts him on first base now with one out. Brings up the leadoff hitter. Bill in. Right. Going to change pitchers. Ted Ebernath, the pitcher out there now. You saw him yesterday. Underhander. Looked like Eldon Alker. Last one I've seen. 
Fires the first pitch down to Bill Lenz, and it's in there for strike one call. We are one out here for the Yankees in the last half of the sixth inning, and the pitcher Roland Shelton on first base. Abernathy underhands the next one, and it's swung on and foul back into the screen for strike two. Bill Lenz, the batter, the shortstop today for the New York Yankees, as Yogi Berra is giving a couple of three of his regulars a little rest. Roger Maris and Tony Kubak, who have been hurt. Joe Peptone. Next pitch. Swan is a bouncing ball to the shortstop. He has it over to second for one, over to first. It's a double play. Man hits into a fast double play. The shortstop to the second soccer, forcing out the pitcher, Roland Sheldon, and a throw to first base, easy double up Lynn. That retires the Yankees here. They make no runs on one hit, no errors. They had no one left on base. And the score after six complete innings of play, it's the Yankees six and the Cleveland Indians two. It's up after the seventh inning, so come on in here, partner. Yes, sir, Larry Brown, the first hitter. Face Roland Shellen here in the top half of the seventh inning as the Yankees lead in this ball game by a score of six to two. Some other scores. Boston seven, Washington two after four. Baltimore four, Detroit nothing after four. Chicago White Sox one, Kansas City nothing after three. L.A. three, Minnesota nothing after three. Larry Brown takes the next pitch for Sheldon. It's outside and low. Ball two. It's a hot day here in Yankee Stadium. We noticed when Bertie Tebbets came out to get Sam McDowell a while ago, his uniform was soaking wet. Larry Brown hit a home run his first time up. Got a single to right field his last time up. Two for two. Second baseman for the Indians. He's taken all the way. It's right down in there for call strike one. Elson Howard doing the catching. Defensively for the Yankees. Gonzalez at first. Richardson at second. Lenz at short. Boyer at third. Tresh in left. Mantle in center. And Hector Lopez. Out in right field. Sheldon doesn't like that sign that Elson Howard gives him. Backs off the rubber. He straightens that right leg of his out before he throws. Now he bends it. Ground ball to Boyer. One hop up with it. Over to Gonzalez, and that's all for Larry Brown. Yankees one game in back of the Baltimore Orioles in the American League. The Baltimore Club leads it. They're also leading Detroit four to nothing. In the National League, some other scores. Up there right now, that's Woody Held. The Mets and St. Louis Cardinals all tied up one and one after three innings. Philadelphia Phillies now lead Cincinnati four to nothing after five. Milwaukee three, Pittsburgh one after four. Woody Hell takes the next pitch outside ball one, and the Houston Colts came up with two runs in the first inning. They lead San Francisco two to nothing. Well, those Colts can come up with some pitching down there. I'll say that for them. They're tough to beat. Woody Hell right on top of that plate. You can see that front foot's back in the middle. There's a line drive by Bobby Richardson out in the right field. Lopez one hands it. Flips it back in, and there's Woody Hell, number 12, coming back to first base. So Woody Hell after striking out twice. Gets a base hit in the right field. They have a pinch in it for Abernathy. So Abernathy comes in and gets the side out, taking over with Sam McDowell after Sheldon got a base hit. Al Smith. Al Smith will be betting for the pitcher. Let's take a look at Al's record. Al has four home runs, nine runs batted in. He played right field yesterday. He has 20 hits on the year. Al Smith used to be at the White Sox and Baltimore Ball Club. He's been around a while, this fellow has. I was kidding today. I said, Al, you can still move a little bit for an old man. Yesterday, that double play, I thought they had to double easily. He takes the first pitch. It's too low. Ball one. Al Smith started his baseball career in 1948 with Wilkes Bear. He 
He's taking the next pitch. It's in there for call strike one. It's one away. First club he played with in the major league was this ball club right here, Cleveland. He played from 53 to 57. Then he went to the White Sox and played over there for five years. With Baltimore one year, now he's back with the club he started with. A swing and a miss on a curveball, two strikes. Al Smith steps out of there. Takes a little practice swing. As Roland Sheldon gets out in front of him, one ball and two strikes. Curveball just got the outside corner. Strike three. Al Smith caught looking, pitch hitting for Ted Abernathy. So it's two away. Brings up Dick Hauser. It's a seventh strikeout for Roland Sheldon. Hauser tells the umpire John Flaherty to take a look at the ball, and Mr. Flaherty throws it out. Throws a new one back to Sheldon. There he is throwing the old ball out. Wasn't too old. Boy, how many of a youngster would like to have that ball and think he had a brand new one. Used to put that friction tape around those balls when we were kids. I guess they still do. First pitch to Dick Hauser right down in there for strike one call. We're in the top half of the seventh inning here at Yankee Stadium. Six to two, Yankees over Cleveland. One strike on Hauser. A curveball in there, call strike two. The Mets came up with two runs. They now lead St. Louis Cardinals three to one after four. Shallon seems to be getting stronger all the time. Curveball missed outside ball one. He had a little trouble in that second inning. As Cleveland broke out in front of this ball game. Francona started off with a line drive home run into right field seats. And Larry Brown hit one in the left field seats. A little tap right back to Shellen. He'll go over to Gonzalez with it. Threw it a little high up with it. There's Gonzalez, and that's all for Hauser. It's all for the end here in the top half of the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. So after six and one half innings of play, the Yankees six and the Indians two. The new pitcher for the Indians, Sonny Siebert. Siebert, 6'3", weighs 190 pounds. He's the third pitcher for the Indians today. McDowell went six, five and one third innings, gave up six runs. He struck out seven. Then Abernathy came in for two thirds of an inning. Bobby Richardson swings on the first pitch, a good fastball, fouls it back on the screen, strike one. Abernathy went two thirds of an inning. No runs, no hits. In fact, they didn't get anything off of him. So now then we have Sonny Siebert out there, 42. Curveball, low and outside, ball one. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Big fella, Sonny Siebert. Pitching to little softer South Carolina Bobby Richardson. Curveball in there. Call strike two. Ribbons, Bobby Richardson struck out in the first inning and then he's singled his last two times up there. Batting 241 coming to today's game. The one and two pitch to Bobby. Curveball. He started held up. Low and outside. Ball two. Well, Pee Wee, there it says again. Welcome CBS Game of the Week. Dizzy Dean and Pee Wee Reese. Gene Kirby and I are doing our best to get you up there on top, but we just haven't done it yet. Well, Diz, I'll tell you, I'll just stay around here for a few more years. I hope. <laughs> Maybe I'll get my name up there. <laughs> a swing and a miss on a good fastball. So Bobby Richardson goes down swinging. For well, the first out, so Sonny Siebert, the first man he faces, Bobby Richardson, he strikes him out. Diz, I don't care if they put my name up there at all as long as I stay right here. 
Well, why don't you see that way when we're off the air? You're always telling us that <laughs> Joe's up there every day, but I don't know why they don't get me up there. Well, I'm just... I've been doing our best. We said, Mr. Bob Fischel, the director here of the Yankees, we said, put it up there one time, Bob. Sure you did. Hector Lopez, curveball, low in the dirt, ball one. Romano, the umpire, wants to take a look at the ball. Said it's all right. Talking about the Shriners, Pee Wee. They got 150,000 Shriners here in New York for the big party here this next week. And all the, most of them and a lot of the clowns are out here today watching the ball game. Look out, dear. Look out. Kirby, I got to say, you made a great catch. Well, there's all I can say. I tried. I caught it and knocked it down. Stung my hand a little bit. <laughs> One ball and one strike on Hector Lopez. That pitch is too low. Two balls and one strike. It's one away. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Six to two. Yankees over Cleveland. Here we fastball inside. Yeah, it sign is for Glenn. All righty, Glenn Kirby, partner. We signed the ball here for now. Kirby's young boy. Gonna, he got the ball. We're going to autograph it and give it to him. There he is. All right, ball four, and Pee Wee Hector Lopez trots down to first base with a base on balls here. With one out. They have a runner on first. There he is, number 11, Hector Lopez. He's about got the ball signed. Looks like he's going to take you all day. <laughs> Diz, I just wanted to say when I wrote Glenn on there, I said, Glenn. I almost caught it, and my fingers are still stinging a little bit. <laughs> Dear just presented the baseball that I came up with to little Glenn Kirby. Boy, and he's real happy. Mickey Mantle takes the first pitch. It's low inside, ball one. And Mickey wants the umpire. John Carter, look at the ball. Talking about the clown, Miss David Allard, you know, is up here with her husband. He's one of the clowns on the unit here. A bunch of them out here to the ball game. And they got a son, Pee Wee, that they brought two baseballs down here for us to autograph for her and her, her daughter and her son. And her son's got a job, she says, a summer job in the East Watermelon Patch down there, and he couldn't come up with them. So he's working the Watermelon Patch this summer. Well, that's wonderful. Mickey Mantle pops one up. Romano takes a look at it. It's back in the stand. Is I have a telegram here. I want to read in a minute from the Saddle Club gang down in Grand Island Saddle Club. That's out in Grand Island, Nebraska. I want to read here. It's, it's kind of an interesting question. A lot of people may like to know. So we have a little time. One ball, one strike on Mickey Mantle. That's two high ball, too. It says, give us a ruling on game played. Yankees versus Cleveland Indians, July the 12th. Game call on account of rain. Is that game to be replayed or finished from the seventh inning? On if to be replayed, how can previous game go down in record book? You want to answer that, Diz? Martin, I can say it's definitely got to be replayed starting from the first inning on. There's the pitch is too high, ball three. Yes, sir. Nice hearing from you. Of course, all of the base hits and everything go right in the record book. But the game will have to be played in its entirety. That's what? And also the whole game, Diz. <laughs> At least five innings. Three balls, one strike on Mickey Mantle. He swings on the next pitch and fouls it straight back. Strike two. See, I think the record says that the all the records are made in that ball game go down the record book. Now, for, if that ball game would have been called off before half, four innings was played, you know, it would have been, why would think it have been wiped out? No, it wasn't going down the record book. And five innings constitutes the ball game. The ball game. That's right, Pee Wee. Nine innings is supposed to be a full ball game. There's a throw to first base with the count of three and two, one away. Lopez. Ten innings is extra innings. Thank you, Diz. Let's see if Lopez will take off with Mickey Mantle up there. 
There he goes, and Mickey Mantle popped it up. And it's a major league pop-up. Woody Hill, the third baseman. Drifts over. Look out, Woody. And he takes it. Flips the glasses back up. And it's two away. Where do you get this comprise and entirety? <laughs> Trying to improve my vocabulary, dude. I don't know what for. <laughs> Tommy Trash, up there right now, two away. Well, I'll say one thing, you're getting awful city fired, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Curveball almost got him. <laughs> now back to the ball game. <laughs> Hector Lopez on the first base, two away. Bottom half, the seventh inning. Sonny Siebert taking over for Ted Abernathy here in the bottom half, the seventh inning. Ten hits for the Yankees. Lopez takes a short lead off of first. A swing and a miss on a good fastball to Siebert. Makes a count one ball and one strike. Next weekend we'll be over in Philadelphia. A game between the Phillies and the St. Louis Cardinals next Saturday and Sunday. Strike two. Fastball. High fastball. At Tommy went far. One ball and two strikes. Thank you, Billy. Remember now, fans, while in today's game, CBS will bring you the conclusion of the PGA Championship from Columbus Country Club. Be sure to see this golf action. Bobby Nichols still on top. Trash swings at another high fastball. A little disgusted with himself. Flops that helmet down, and that's all for the Yankees here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. No run. No hits, no errors, and one man left on base who had the seven full innings of play. The Yankees six and the Cleveland Indians two. Top half the eighth inning. Roland Sheldon still on the mound for the New York Yankees. All the way, he's given up six hits and two runs. Both of them home runs. There he is, Roland Sheldon. Vic Davalillo, number 25, coming in there. PGA Championship from Columbus Country Club. Bring it to you at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Got up on the scoreboard right now. Bob Fischel has Phil, Diz, Jerry, Pee Wee. Are you coming for Old Timers Day? Vic Davalio hits the first ball down to Cleet Boyer at third base. He flips the ball over to Gonzalez for the first out. But Roland Sheldon on the first pitch to Davalio. Hits a hard shot down at Boyer on the one hopper. Boyer is playing in real close. Hey, Diz, look at there now. They won't even put Pee Wee on top there. Pee Wee, I'll tell you, we're going to be here. That's on the 8th. We'll be here, won't we? Nothing yes, happened. sir. Good Lord's willing. Yes, I kind of look forward to it. I enjoy it. Leon Wagner, first pitch, too high, ball one. Be kind of funny putting that uniform on, though, Diz. We'll be on the same team for a change, won't we? Always have been on the same team. Been Man, on the same. Playing the Yankees, won't we? Yes, sir. Pitches in there for call strike one. Well, I see that you've got top fill in there, too, Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another shortstop got top fill in there, I guess. <laughs> I remember last time, isn't it, all old timers game? We could hardly get him out. Leon Wagner hits a high, lazy fly out in the right field. Lopez looking over at Mantle, but Mantle says, You better take it, Hector. And he does. Or out number two. And now he says something, hollers over to Mantle. Having a little laugh out there. Lopez was looking for Mickey. <laughs> Mickey said, no help, Hector. In that second game, after resting Maris, and Pepitone, and Quebec, I imagine they'll be back in there. Would you think so, Diz? I think they'll play probably the second ball game. Of course, it's hard to they win this ball game to break up a winning combination, isn't it? It wouldn't be too hard to get the Maris, <laughs> Pepitone, and uh, Quebec back in there. Of course, I know these fellas done a good job. 
Bob Chance up there right now. There's a line drive. Can Mickey catch up to it? Hurry up if you can, Mick. He has it right there. That fella can hit that ball. Bob Chance. Mickey Mantle got on his horses. Came up with it. Bob is still a little unhappy. No run. No hits. No errors. And no one left on base. So after seven one half innings of play, it's still the Yankees six and the Cleveland Indians two. At the eighth inning. Sonny Siebert on the mound. The Cleveland Indians. The Yankees leading six to two. And the first hitter here in the bottom half of the eighth inning will be Alston Howard saying something to the catcher. There's Bob Fischel who what is his title Gene he's public relations man. Bill Guilfoyle's assistant for, to Bob Fischel do a terrific job. And Bob Fischel does a little bit of everything around here. Sonny Siebert first pitch to Alston Howard low and outside ball one. Give you some other scores just in a minute here. A few changes up there. Elson Howard swings on the fastball, misses it, strike one. Nine to five. Boston over Washington after five innings of play. Elson Howard really spread out up there, which he does most all the time. Holds those arms out away from him. Look out, Elson inside, ball two. Baltimore leads the trot four to nothing after five. They're hanging tough. The White Sox lead Kansas City one to nothing after five. Those White Sox really get some good pitching, don't they, Diz? Oh, I mean they do, partner. That count, that helps too. Grand ball right back to the middle, base hit. In comes Davalio. Elston Howard makes a ton of turn at first base. Throws the helmet back to Jim Gleason, so he has his second hit of the day. Two for four for Elston Howard. And Minnesota with all that power getting shut out by the Los Angeles Angels eight to nothing. You know Diaz every once in a while you see that Minnesota club get shut out or held to low runs. They make a lot of runs sometimes as you say Pee Wee sometimes they get shot in really low run game. Yes sir. Elson Howard takes the lead over first base and Don Zell looked like he was trying to hit that ball in the right field. He misses it strike one no one away in the National League. Houston two San Francisco Giants nothing after three Milwaukee five Pittsburgh one after five a throw to first base Nelson back in plenty of time the New York Mets three the St. Louis Cardinals one after five Philadelphia now four and Cincinnati came up with two runs four to two Philadelphia over Cincinnati after six Gonzalez takes the next pitch it's low ball one Chicago at L.A. that game hasn't started that's the only game it hasn't started. One ball, one strike on Gonzalez. Swing and a miss, strike two. He had a ripple at it. Gonzalez doubled in the second inning. Rounded out to the shortstop and struck out. He's one for three today. Fastball is popped up off to the right, back in the stands. One ball, two strikes on Gonzalez. That's Elson Howard on the first base. Big Bob Chance right next to him there. Be we Holding keep on. your eye on the ball, partner. I did then, this. <laughs> Elson Howard a short lead off of first. Look out. Inside. Ball two. Every time that ball comes close to that hitter, Diz, yeah. automatically and instinctively, I say, look out. I've noticed you jumping up here in the booth. Kind of flinch a little bit. Well, they try to pitch to the weakness. <laughs> two and two to Gonzalez. There's one back over our head. And the count remains. Two and two. You have something there you want to say, Diz? You got a telegram? We yeah, have a wire here from Mr. George Wallace Jackson from Huntsville, Alabama, partner. Going to ball game. Still two and two on Gonzalez. No one away in. Elston Howard on first. And he fouls another one. Pee Wee, we also have a wonderful wire here. I'd like to acknowledge from Mobile, Alabama. 
celebrating my 62nd birthday, watching your program, enjoying it as I have for many years. Signed, Jim Barnes. Well, that's wonderful, partner. Congratulations on your 62nd birthday, Mr. Barnes. Be we and I are glad to hear from you. And sir, Jimmy, hope you have a few more. I'm sure you will. Two and two. There's a high pop-up out into center field. Davalito going back. Now he has to come in. That ball fooled him a little bit. Davalillo. Davalillo going back to his position and stepping in at home plate. That's Cleet Boyer. Have a telegram here. It is from Bill Legrand out in Wichita, Kansas. Dear Mr. Dean, enjoy the game very much. We'd like to hear you sing Wabash Cannonball. Well, Diz has just got through singing it, and I'm sure that you heard it, Bill. But, Diz, I cannot keep you from singing it again if you want to. Oh, partner, we're going to wait now until next week and sing a new one. Cleet Boyer tries to go to right field, fouls it off to right. Strike one on him. Elson Howard on the first base. Pee Wee, you know, we've all, we've promised the fans now, you and I are going to sing what you call a duet before the season's over. You sure we are. <laughs> I mean, it was your suggestion. No, it was not either. One strike on Boyer. Curveball could be a double play. Hauser up with it over to Larry Brown. Flips it over to Bob Chance. And, Bo and Boyer never did make it to first base, but that's all for the Yankees here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. No runs. On one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. So after eight full innings of play, it's the New York Yankees. Six, and the Cleveland Indians, two. Going to the top half of the ninth inning. The last chance for the Cleveland Indians. They trail on this ball game by a score of 6-2. to two. Tito Francona will be the first hitter. He hit a home run in the second inning. And to tell you all about it, Dizzy, come on in here. Thank you, Pee Wee. Yes, the last chance for this ball club. As the Yankees leading this ball game 6-2, to two, they made 11 hits on committed one error. Indians have made two runs on six hits, committed no errors. And Tito Francona. Has one hit, a home run. His first time up there. Leads things off here for Cleveland. Sheldon winds and fires the first pitch. And it's high for ball one. One ball and no strikes. And next week, fans, Pee Wee and I'll be in Philadelphia with the St. Louis Cardinals. Saturday and Sunday. Here's the next pitch. And it's high for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Understand next uh, week I'm going to have no hit Jim Bunning as my guest before the ball game. <laughs> Looking forward to talking to Big Jim. I believe he's pitching today, too. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the next pitch. In there for strike one call. Two and one to count on Francono. Leading things off here for the Indians. Whitey Ford is going to pitch the second ball game. Here's the two and one pitch. Swings and fouls the ball out of play to the left for strike two. That evens the count up at two and two. two pitch to Francono and it's high inside for ball three three and two take your coat off the wheel sit down and relax everything's going to be all right three and two the count Sheldon goes back to that Rosen bag boy how many times I've picked that thing up and wished I could throw it there's the wind up and the three and two pitches on his way. Ball four, he walked it. Well, six to two in favor of the Yankees. And I'm sure that Yogi Bear has somebody warming up down the bullpen. Yes, that is the first base on ball, Gene. Oh, there's old Shellen. He was kind of 
little rocky at the start of this game. He was, you know, having a little trouble. He's really settled down, hasn't he? He certainly has, Pee Wee. Next batter up there, Romano takes the first pitch, and it's ball one low. So far in this inning, though, he's got the ball lightest. He walked the first batter and has one ball and no strikes on this guy, but he has pitched a tremendous ball game after that second inning. The only two runs scored off was two home runs. Here's the next pitch, and it's strike one call. He found the strike zone there. A blazer right down the middle. Yes, he does. Got good stuff, Pee Wee. One ball and one strike. The next pitch. Swung on, there's a hard hit ball. Five, the third baseman knocks the ball down. The shortstop grabs it, throws over to second, and all runners are safe. There was a peculiar play, fan. You saw on your screen, Venus Boyer hit that ball with his glove hand, and it climbed off his glove, and the shortstop lands, grabbed the ball, whipped over to Bobby Richardson at second base, but the throw was too late. Francona was safe there. And then the throw from Richardson back over to first base, but too late to get the runner down there. The catcher, Romano, and both runners are safe. Nobody out. And the next batter coming up the plate is Larry Brown. He has a home run, counted for one of the runs they made in the second inning. Larry Brown, the second soccer. Here's the first pitch to him, and it's in there for strike one call. The Yankees warming someone up in the bullpen. Don't forget, 430, PGA at Columbus, Ohio, the last four holes of that tournament. Next pitch, he tries to bump the ball and foul tips it for strike two. There's the pitchers warming up. That looks like Mickelson warming up to number 44, the catcher Jim Higgin, the batting practice catcher. You know, Diz, that was a good play that Larry Brown just tried. They're trailing by four runs here, and he caught ball your back a little bit. Beat one out if you can. Make sure it's right down that foul line, though. Here's the next pitch. Swings and fouls that ball on the ground down the third baseline. Sally Hemus fails the ball, throws it back to the pitcher. Yes, it's a good play Pee Wee if it works and if you're hitting around 360 it's also a good play because you can sacrifice and not get a chance time at bat. No. Was you thinking about that? I didn't have that in mind. I didn't say you know. Did I used you to ever say, bunt with uh, four runs behind? Well sure. Your run doesn't mean anything anyway up here at home plate. You have to get on there. Next pitch is outside. Or ball one, one ball and two strikes. You know what they used to say in baseball, Dave? You bunt it like that with a tying run on second base. <laughs> I know they let George do it. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. The next pitch swung on as a bouncing ball, hit to the third base and cuts for you, cuts it there, grabs the ball, throws over to second, the one over to first, and it's not in time as Brown beats the throw, and I'll guarantee you. Fran Cono, the, I mean the Romano, the runner on first, really upset that Richardson. He was flying through the air on the flying trapeze. I'll guarantee you there. The ball got there just in time that Richardson got there. Romano hit him and turned him bottom side upward. He got his throw off to first base, but not in time. Runner on second moves over to third, Tito Francona. And there's a runner at first base. Larry Brown and Woody Hell is the next batter up there. Here's the pitch to him. In there for strike one call. One strike to count on Woody Hell. The next pitch. Yes, he went around. He tried to hold back, but he went around for strike two, and it's two and nothing. Boy, a lot of times, I remember when I was pitching, you got that good high hard one, and you get two strikes on a guy. You figure well, you might try to waste one or get a guy to go to a, for a bad one. Boy, I used to get that signal, shake my head three or four times, like I was going to take him off the signal and rear back and bob that fastball in there, and I've had him just stand there with a bat on his shoulder. And I love that. 
Here's the next pitch. High inside for ball one. One ball and two strikes. There's just what did you try seriously? What did where did you try to throw the ball most of the time? Were you trying to be around the plate or would you get two strikes and no balls on a hitter? Yes, uh, Pee Wee. I tried to get the ball somewhere right near the plate. I wasn't trying to miss the plate. I was trying to get a strike. There's a drive going to left field seats. Foul. Boy, that ball was tagged. I don't believe in, uh, in uh, just wasting, wasting too pitch. many pitches out there and can, unless it's uh, for a reason. I uh, I don't think that the uh, hitter's up there with two strikes on him. He's definitely trying to protect that plate. And there's uh, no need of standing out there throwing 100 balls when you don't have to throw but 90. Yeah, because what I was referring to, Diz, you see some pitches with a count of two strikes and no ball. They just completely wasted them. No one will swing at it. I've seen it, Pee Wee, and I, 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 I just don't understand it. I don't, I don't believe in it. it but it helps a lot of fellows that, that's got that good high heart and good stuff. You can throw that two or nothing pitch over the plate and get by with it. But I can see where a lot of those, what we might say, cunning thumbs. There's a bouncy ball hit to the shortstop. Could be two. Over to second for one. Over to first. It's a double play. A fast double play there. Turned in by the shortstop fan. Over to Bobby Richardson. Over to first. Complete a double play. And to end the inning and also the ball game. Here for the Cleveland Indians. They made no run on one hit. No errors. And they had one man left on base. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. But right now... That's the end of the ball game. The final score, fans, the Yankees 6, the Cleveland Indians 2. 